in Edmonton, lots going on. You said kind of looking forward to getting on the road because that's sort of the next part of the head coaching experience for you. What it's early, but what what, what are you thinking and just uh, what role do you have to do because things are set? To, do you change anything or you just kind of slide in with whatever was previously planned? I uh, know there's a lot of changes. Um, you know, I don't know. I might be changing something I don't think I am, or I think I might be changing something that wasn't. I don't know, but I just ultimately I, I know how I want to coach and the systems that I want to implement. Um, there's some things that we've changed already, um, some things that we are just gradually doing. Um, it's tough here in the NHL with little practice times, it's play almost every second day, and the day in between is often it's a rest day, so uh, practice is, is uh, minimal. Um, but um, I don't know, I just want to players to kind of learn who I am and um, get to know me and hopefully I can get to know them. Is that a little easier to do on the road, do you think? Or you might have more time to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, at, at home we're, we're um, at the rink, obviously, at Rogers, it's a beautiful facility and um, the players like to hang around there because it's, it's, you know, everything's, uh, amenities are, are great. Uh, so you do get to see them. It's not like they're racing out to get out of there. Uh, but when you're on the road, you catch a guy getting on the bus, and um, I don't know, it's just more relaxed, and you have more opportunities to talk to, to talk to the players. Seems like the past few games, Stuart Skinner has been one of the key factors, <coughs> if not the key factor, for this team's success. What have you noticed about him just over the few days that you've been able to get to know him, both on and off the ice? Um, yeah, I think uh, a very nice young man who's um, motivated to play well. And, um, you know, from what I've seen, I'm, I've been very impressed. And I've only seen him in two practices and two games. But, um, you know, obviously any goaltender, there's ups and downs. And um, in his level of play is, <clears throat> you know, it's not going to be like that every night. But uh, certainly he has the capability of being like that. Uh, most nights and um, you know this is what the team needs is solid goaltending and he's provided that. Do you find that when your goaltender <coughs> whether he's standing on his head or just making those you know really important saves that that trickles out throughout the rest of the team? Absolutely players want to have the confidence in the goaltenders and the last thing players want is oh, if I make a mistake it's gonna end up in our net and um, so often that's when more mistakes happen. Evander Kane has been having what I like to call fingerprint games. So he has his fingerprints all over the score sheet, but also all over the ice and in the team's success. When you have a player playing at that level, what kind of precedent does that set for the lead, or for the rest of the team Excuse me, to follow? Oh, well, it just breeds confidence. Um, you see a player playing well and guys are like, um, you know, He's going, I, I need to be following uh, suit. And, but also, when you have a player that's going, it also makes the guys on the ice better just because he's going to be making a play and um, getting him the puck and not turning the puck over and not having to play defense more than they should. And You know, uh, Leon's set him up, especially the one where the empty net goal, where um, it was a beautiful pass, but obviously you have a skilled player making that pass. But Leon knew where he was going to be and, you know, led to that cold that was so huge um, to put that game in it over time so um, yeah I think a lot of guys are very um, invigorated watching him play and his passion that he's been providing what's your what's your philosophy on using your goaltenders and does it fit with the situation you're in now where you you know you got a veteran guy and a minor league call up guy like what do you usually do with your goalies in terms of playing um yeah, no, it all depends on the schedule and back-to-back. -back, I like to split the goalies and not having that goalie play back-to-backs. Um, <coughs> excuse me, if the goalie's winning, you obviously play with him um, a little bit longer, give him a longer leash. Um, I don't know, every um, situation is, uh, is different. And right now, just coming in here, Skinner has been playing really well and, you know, um, we're probably going to continue going on that route for a little little bit longer. Yeah, like some people say, oh, you can't play the guy every game. No. But if you have a day off between every <coughs> game, you don't have a back-to-back -back till late December. I guess my question would be how long can you play a guy when you have lots of days off? Is that change things? Yeah, no, it's it's unfortunate for the, um, the backup goalie. And I know it's working in, um, in the minor leagues and you're talking about the goalies, and what their future is and um, you're talking about 
just you're in a situation, you're preparing them that when they do make that step to the NHL, that they are going to be the backup. And often you are going to be in a situation where you're going to have to play the back-to-back and teams in front of you is going to be a little bit tired and they're not going to be as good as they're playing in front of the starter. And you might go a week without playing a game. So um, ultimately you want your... Um, like I said, with my forwards, my defense, we want to put them in a situation that they're going and they're making sure that they're contributing because often your best players are your best players. And it's also the same with your starting goalie is you got to protect them and put them in situations that um, he's going to win games.